And that's why a lot of private jets seem to be very expensive. Yep. If you've not met Ruby, this is our lifelong pet of a dog that's been with us forever, and David loves it to bits. For those that don't know, David is uh, the founder of a business called Channel Jet uh, and offers private aviation services for individuals. And we can talk about that part of your life and that kind of business. Because for me, what I've learned about private jets, it's kind of like everyone says, oh my God, can you afford that? And it's kind of like, it's a time enabler. Mm -hmm. And it's and, and for me, when we first met, it was a kind of, okay, what is the value of my time? So if you work it out and say, okay, call it a thousand pounds an hour, what is the travel time to go Guernsey to London, London to Nice? Okay, that's eight hours. That's eight thousand pounds. And if I was to fly with you and call it four thousand pounds as a single flight, you know, time and money to do those numbers. Well, yeah, and there is that aspect to it. But the world has also changed post COVID, and what we're finding now is there's an awful lot of people that use us because they just find that the whole experience of air travel is is just become quite miserable. Yeah. You know, the queuing up for check-ins, particularly security and so on and so forth. And it's, it's, it's like sheep herding, isn't it? You know, yeah. and, and, and in terms of getting people through these major airports. And so we found that, as I say, post-COVID, there's been, there's been a new um, set of people that have never flown private jets before that are now trying it out. But I think for me, empty jets, empty legs, people don't understand that if you fly from A to B, so let's say I fly from Guernsey to Geneva, then that plane needs to fly somewhere. You know, that, that plane yes, in terms does. of positioning, it may be, you know, you go Guernsey to Geneva, that's your leg. And then it's from a marketing perspective, you market as a company, empty legs or empty jets. And not so many people don't know you can fly sometimes for free if you're lucky because the plane's going somewhere anyway, or you can bid and, and make an offer say, hey, it's an empty jet. I'll give you 500 pounds or a thousand pounds. That's right. I mean, the, what you've got with scheduled airlines is if we take our island here or there's a, we know what the schedule is going to be a year in advance. And so you can book yourself on a flight because there's a specific time that a flight leaves every day from one airport to the other. And you can go one way for one price. It doesn't work like that in the business jet world. In the business jet world, we go to fairly random places. And actually that's the benefit of the business jet world, which is let's say for argument's sake, we have a businessman here in Guernsey that has a meeting, let's say somewhere like the Isle of Man or Luxembourg or Geneva. Those are quite frequent places that we go to. They're awkward places to get to with using uh, commercial airlines. But in one of our jets, it will take Isle of Man an hour, Luxembourg an hour, Geneva one and a half hours, that kind of time. However, as you've quite rightly pointed out, if you're going there, not just for a day's meeting, but you're going there for a week's meeting, the jet can't sit and wait there for a week. Right. So the jet then has to return to base empty. And that's why a lot of private jets seem to be very expensive. So what we try and do within our company is to try and advertise those empty legs as aggressively uh, as we possibly can. Because as you quite rightly say, that aeroplane's moving from A to B with nobody on board. And that right. just doesn't make any sense. And that means that we've been able to get lots and lots of people from these islands to, uh, onto private jets at prices that they could only dream of. So obviously in the past, I've flown Guernsey to Geneva, you know, six and a half thousand pounds. And if you've got someone to share with, it's 3,250 pounds each. It's like a business class there, but the time saving is incredible. And also post um, Brexit, no queuing in and out. You, you sort of turn up the airport 10 minutes before you fly, you land, you get a, a, a beautiful chauffeur-driven car, pick you up, takes you through to customs, pops you out the other side, and you're done within an hour and a half. And that and that's the benefit, isn't it? You know, and there's a, there's a premium to pay for that. But that goes back to the value of time. If your time is a thousand pounds an hour, two thousand pounds an hour, five thousand pounds an hour, and you waste eight hours traveling from A to B, then if you fly private, people think, oh, that's so expensive. But w in reality, flying private isn't always as expensive as what people would think. But well, we have two broad categories of clients. We've got the client that you've just described, which is the business person who are 
typically, typically tend to own their own businesses. So they, we, we find that, for example, if bank employees aren't allowed to use private jets because it wouldn't be seen as being yeah, the right yeah. thing to the bank's shareholders and but so I on. I never understand that because it's time well, cost savings. Exactly. I don't get it. It's, but there, there's, there's an opinion out there that flying in a private jet is a very profligate thing to do. In actual fact, you're absolutely right. In, in many circumstances, it, it, what we, we, let's take it, that example I gave you earlier of Luxembourg. Yeah. If you've got a, a Guernsey lawyer that has to go and transact business in Luxembourg, and that Guernsey lawyer is charging, let's say, seven or eight hundred pounds an hour. Mm. If they leave Guernsey on a scheduled flight, let's yeah. say on a Monday morning, yeah. they're probably not going to get back till a Wednesday night for one meeting on the Tuesday. Yeah. And yet they're going to be billing out three days of work. Now you work out the numbers on that. Yeah. Whereas if they use us, we can go to and from Luxembourg. They can get an hour's meeting done and be back on the same day. So it's actually less expensive in those types of so I mean, if it's 800 pounds, you know, an hour and it's eight hour days, it's, you know, so that's 6,400, you know, yeah, times three, times three. Eight, 18, there you go. 19,200. And once you start talking about like that, then what you often get is a lawyer saying to their client, well, I can attend that meeting on your behalf. I can either come on a private jet and it's going to cost you, let's say for argument's sake, 12,000, which includes me coming on a jet or 18,000 if I go yeah. scheduled. So, you know, there's that kind of thing. But actually, so we've got the entrepreneurs as well that run their own businesses that use us. But then the other half of our clients are actually much older people. Mm -hmm. And when I say much older, I'm talking the sort of 70 plus okay. age range, right up into the 90s. Yeah. And we do an awful lot of business with them because they're getting old. They're worried about the whole thing that we've just been through a COVID, pandemic yeah. with COVID and so on and so forth. If they leave Guernsey, there's only one route down to the south of Spain, which is up to London and then back down again and so on and so forth. By coming with us, we can go straight from Guernsey and two, two and a half hours later, they're either in Malaga, Ibiza, Mallorca, Nice, wherever it happens to be. So those are the two types of clients that we've got. There's no worries, as you say, in terms of checking in. Yeah. It's, a, it's a very smooth process. They have the whole aircraft to themselves. The crew look after them and them only. So there are a lot. Yes, it comes at a, at a price, obviously. Where the eclipse comes in, if you imagine that this here is is zero and this is yeah. the price of a business class ticket yeah a private jets here somewhere yeah, yeah. well the eclipse sits somewhere down in the middle that's still going to be more expensive to use an eclipse jet than a business class ticket yeah. but it's not going to be that much more expensive and that's why i think that we're bringing in a completely new genre of client people that have never used private jets before are using our service i think for me people need to be educated about using private jets because they're not as expensive as people think, yes, they cost money. Yes, it's a lot of money, but it can make a massive difference. Well, let me give you some data. So Eurocontrol data says, that's been fairly consistent for the last 10 years or so, that 80 to 85% of all BizJet biz flights in Europe, so all BizJets from the Gulf Streams and Dassault, Dassault Falcons and Globals and so on, right down to the smallest being the Eclipse, all of those flights, 80 to 85% of them have two passengers or less yeah. on board. Yeah. And 80 to 85% of those have a duration of two hours or less. Yeah. Well, that means that 80 to 85% of all flights in Europe could be done in the eclipse because that's the typical range yeah. profile of the eclipse. And yet they're not. Um, and so it could be argued that there is a, a lot of profilig profligacy that's going on yeah. in the biz jet world. You've got 16 seater jets flying around 80% of the time with one or two people in the back. I saw the other day with a global land in Guernsey and the chap flew back to pick up his passport. No, of course. I mean, that was like, you know, unbelievable. Yeah. He was probably, yeah. Okay. If you've made your money and then what have you, and you can afford to fly on a global, it was a big jet. It landed, a guy picked up his passport, he forgot it, and then he flew off somewhere else. Yeah. And it happens. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Incredible and, world. And, and that's, and that, yeah. So, that, that's what we're dealing with. And what we've got to do is educate people. There will be some people that say, I want a stand-up cabin. I want, a, I want a flat bed and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. That's fine. We get that. And we don't cater to that. But if you're looking to get from A to B in a range of, let's say, 700 nautical miles or less, which is most of Europe, you know, that's so 700 nautical miles for all those people that don't know. Uh, well, miles. from, from, yeah. let's say from London, you're talking to the south of France, okay. to the edge of the Balearic Islands, yeah. you know, so Ibiza, Mallorca, yeah. 
that kind of range. So you're talking Northern Italy. Nice. It, it's comfortable for us. So most of Europe, basically, from London and Guernsey in, in our case. So what we're saying to people is if that's what you're looking for and you want to do it at a fraction of the price of other BizJet options, yeah. have a look at us. Yeah, I think it makes a lot of difference because people, if you look at, is it jet cards they call them or mm -hmm. you buy them by the hour? Yeah. I mean, sometimes those are very expensive. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the, and it varies. It varies on what company you use and what type of jet you're flying on. You know, to put a, a, a 10-ton jet into the air costs a lot more than putting a three-ton jet into the air. So it's all about physics, really, and the amount of fuel they burn and engine programs and so on. And what about all the eco noise we now get, unfortunately, regarding private jet aviation? Mm -hmm. How does that work out in terms of pollution and things? Well, I can only talk so, with authority on our yeah, aircraft, cool. but which we are the most eco-efficient and eco-friendly jet in the world, bar none. The noise standards on the Eclipse are well below all of the uh, noise abatement parameters for the major European airports. So, yeah, it's a small jet and it's a very quiet jet. Excellent. Now, I'm learning all the time because when you're flying private, you look at certain things. And then for me, sometimes some of my clients get criticized because they're doing all this damage and, and what have you. And I think I saw a jet the other day got sprayed with, with paint. I mm. saw a, a Supiot get sprayed with paint as well. And I sometimes think to myself that it's very unfair because you know the, how many staff that they, they employ, how many how much tax they create mm -hmm. to enable them to fly private or to have their own private yacht. Because it just gets to the stage where for my super famous clients, they want privacy. You know, they want to land, they want to go to an airport, get on their private plane without no one knowing that mm -hmm. it's them, land somewhere. Sometimes there'll be a helicopter that then takes them from that airport straight off of the jet to the helicopter, lands on the yacht. No one knows mm -hmm. who they are and where they are from a, a security perspective, and also kidnap some of my clients who are billionaires have children and, and, and certainly in South America and other countries, mm. kidnap risk is a major threat. Mm. So for me, private jets, yacht transport, I think is, is a necessity in certain countries. My opinion on this is that's all just pu publicity. Mm -hmm. Putting a load of pains over a private jet will get publicity. It won't change. Private jets really don't make up much in the way of pollution as a whole in the world. If we want to tackle climate change, we have to go to the big producers at nation state level. Yeah. And that's countries like China, like India, like, the, like America, and so on and so forth. I mean, the UK as a whole, forget private jets for a moment, yeah, yeah. but everything in the air, every truck, every bus, every plane, every power station, you name it, makes up still less than 1% of the world's greenhouse gases. Wow. And so... You're talking such a minuscule amount. This is just publicity. That's all it is. Yeah. And it will never change. That's just going to come. That's just going to be part of our world. It's, and what we, uh, all we can do is try and educate people to say, this won't make a blind bit of difference whatsoever. And in fact, what we do is we, we, we we're an enabler to so economic important. growth. So if you're looking to fly privately, then obviously David's business channel jets, you find them on LinkedIn, a great business, great provider. And I certainly highly recommend them. So uh, what advice would you give to yourself or to others if you were 18 years old starting out in life today? I would definitely do things differently to the way I did them. <laughs> and that's not to say I didn't enjoy my life, but yeah. I remember being a young man, well, a young kid, really, yeah, 12, yeah, 13 yeah. years old. Wow. And I decided I wanted to be a fighter pilot. Wow. And I remember saying to my staff at school, what subjects should I take? Yeah. And they said, oh, you'll, you'll need maths, you'll need physics, uh, and so on. The subjects I actually enjoyed were art, were yeah. geography, were yeah. history. Yeah. But instead, I did go ahead and do the maths, the physics, the chemistry, and what have you, and really didn't enjoy those subjects, and therefore didn't really excel at them, mm -hmm. and had a fairly miserable time academically. And when I joined the Air Force, I did join to train to be a pilot. And when I got there, all the other pilots had done art, <laughs> history, <laughs> geography. So it really didn't make any difference. And yeah. I always said back then, if ever I have children, yeah. I'll tell them, if you're going to do something, do something that you enjoy and you think you'll have an interest in because you're more likely to excel or do well at it if you actually enjoy. And that old phrase that people say that if you enjoy what you do for a living, you never work a day in your life, I, I think is really quite true. Yeah. 